What's going on YouTube? My name is Eric Sun and I'm a photographer based out of Atlanta, Georgia. And this is video two in my mini video series about lenses. And I'm breaking up each lens into its own separate video because I wanted to be able to go more in depth with each lens that I use, what I use it for, the pros and cons, if I would recommend it and its features, uh, in hopes that it helps you have a better understanding of these lenses. And also if you're thinking about buying one of these lenses, you'll be a more informed buyer because these lenses are not cheap. We are all about saving money here. And uh, hopefully that these videos will help you determine if it's worth it for you to pay thousand dollars or something and up. So without further ado, this is the second lens that I wanted to highlight today. And it is the 14 to 24 Sigma 2.8 art lens. And for me, I am a sucker for Sigma art lenses. Uh, I just really love them. I think that they are super well built. They're durable, they're quick, they're sharp. Um, and I've never had a problem with any Sigma lenses. Ever since I got my first Sigma lens, I've always been a fan. Uh, I've always been a fan because of how it looks, how sharp that it is, uh, how versatile the lenses can be. And the more that these videos start coming out, you'll, you'll notice that I am a very big Canon and Sigma lens guy. That's just all the lenses that I have. They're mostly Canon and Sigmas. Um, I do have other third party lenses, but the majority are Sigmas and Canons. So that's just giving you a heads up there. And I am a real estate and, and architecture photographer. Uh, so the lens, this lens right here is my wide angle lens that I use all the time for all of those shoots. Uh, I always bring this lens with me along with my 24 to 70. And I did talk about the 24 to 70 2.8 lens from Canon in a previous video. We can go check out on my channel. Um, but this lens, because of the versatility of the 14 to 24 focal range, I can capture multiple looks and multiple scenes uh, with different perspectives just because I can zoom in. And I love that. I love zoom lenses. I'll always recommend trying to get zoom lenses if you can. Um, prime lenses are fantastic as well. And there are definitely pros in getting prime lenses. I have one that I'll be doing another video on in the future. Uh, but for this, because it is a zoom lens, I do really appreciate the fact that I can capture really small spaces at the 14 millimeter like powder rooms or closets and for 24 i can zoom in if i'm capturing like a really big living room or a kitchen and i want that that hero shot in those spaces the 24 definitely captures that and it doesn't go in so much where i start losing uh some aspects of the room that i want to capture uh and this lens has a hood I guess that's what you'd call it. Uh, it has a hood right here, um, which is a little bit different than all the other lenses that I have. It has a little cloth part at the bottom that prevents the hood from sliding on and off. Uh, as I took the hood off, I'm pretty sure that you can see that the lens is not flat. The lens is a little bit around, it bulges out a little bit, and it has these visors. Uh, the visors are really good uh, if you shoot outdoors or if there's any light that comes from above or just anywhere that these visors are located on the lens that helps kind of block that out so you don't get those uh, sun flares in the lens that are really distracting unless that's what you're going for uh, but it helps block that out so it works really well with real estate and with architecture to kind of remove that so you can actually see the space see the features of the home or the property and uh, one thing that's really cool about this lens is that it does shoot auto and manual focus. Uh, I love this lens for um, mostly because it's a 2.8 and so that when I do video walkthrough tours, I'm able to go all the way down to 2.8 uh, because sometimes rooms are just super dark and I don't have any artificial light with me and sometimes if it's overcast day and the sun is not directly, light's not directly coming into the room, it gets really dark and having a 2.8 lens allows me to capture in a lot more light uh, for the exposure to probably expose for the room. That's mostly for video. For photo, usually on a tripod, you can go all the way up to like F14 and change your shutter speed. I mean, I usually shoot at F8, F9, um, but you have the ability because you're on a tripod. And again, like this lens, this lens is, pretty heavy, it's pretty hefty, it's built really well. But because it is heavy, I feel like that it just feels like it can endure so much. I mean, I have used this lens for years now and I've definitely hit it on things. I've accidentally bumped it into uh, like doors or onto like walls and it works perfectly fine. I, I would not recommend that you just try and just, you know, 
go at it and just try to really beat something with this but uh it is i mean it is heavy you can feel that it is durable and that it can take a beating but i would not recommend you intentionally trying to beat it that's all i'm saying and another downfall of this lens that i want to highlight is that these visors right here um, because the lens bulges out it does not allow you to put any filters in the front of this lens at least i haven't found any if you have know of a solution uh then definitely let me know in the comments because that would help me out a lot but i actually would not recommend this lens because of that when i first bought this lens i wasn't really thinking about i mean i was still new to fairly new to photography i didn't really use filters or anything like that uh, so i bought this lens uh, knowing that it's a wide angle, knowing that it's for a full frame, it goes down to 2.8, it zooms from 14 to 24. Great, covers all of those things that I really was looking for in a lens, but I did not think about the filters that I would be wanting to use for like the glare on the hardwood floors or on countertops. Um, and because the way that this lens is built, it just makes that a lot more difficult. Now the Sony mount version of this Sigma lens, you can actually put the filters out in the back. But for the Canon version, I have not found anything that works really well with it. Uh, and I have not got the actual like, mount that you can screw on because I do feel like that since the front and back, like these, the top and bottom visors right here, they stick out a lot more than the sides do. Uh, and so when I put the mount on, I mean, I feel like it's still going to allow some light in through and it won't fully cover everything that I need it to. So I actually have not bought a filter system for this lens uh, because I've been researching online about what other people use. And the things that I've seen is that people are like, oh, I sold the lens and I got, I got another lens that makes life just a lot easier where they can just screw on and off just like any other lens that you have. But that is probably the biggest reason why I would not recommend this lens is mostly because of that. Uh, but in terms of it being a lens, in terms of what it can do as a wide angle lens and how sharp it is, how fast it is and finding focus, that it has auto and manual focus, that it's reliable, durable, uh, definitely love those aspects. But in terms of using this lens to its fullest potential, capturing the things that I need, I would say 90% of the time it works. I mean, I use flash uh, in most of my shots. so. Uh, with flash, I'm able to kind of remove some of the glare, but being able to put filters on this lens uh, to for more like higher end, more professional, higher end locations and multi-million dollar homes or commercial spaces or retail spaces, having that lens, uh, having that filter option definitely is a game changer. Uh, so if you're thinking about buying this lens, keep that in mind. Uh, I mean, it's probably, it probably will still work really great with landscapes. Uh, it still works great with real estate, with architecture. I mean, I still use this lens all the time. I actually had a shoot earlier today that I used this lens on, um, but the filter, the lack of the ability of being able to put filters on it definitely is a big negative for me. Um, and that's why I would not recommend this lens. Uh, this lens is expensive enough um, that you can probably find an alternative lens that does not have that filter problem because of the visors on top of it. Uh, so that's my honest two cents. And yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, let me know what you think about it. Uh, I would still, I mean, I still use this lens. It still produces great results. Uh, I have photos that I'll be throwing up on the screen where you can see the quality of the photos and how much space that it can capture along with the focal ranges on those photos. So you can see what it looks like zoomed in, zoomed out at a 14 millimeter or 24 millimeter range. And let me know in the comments what you think. If you have this lens, if you use this lens, or if you're one of the people that sold this lens to get a different one, uh, let me know. Uh, and also let me know if you have any questions. I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you have about this lens, because I want to help you be as informed as you can uh, before dropping like $1,000 on this lens. And yeah, thanks so much for watching. I'll have the next video up soon about my next lens. But if you want to hear about the details and my perspective of the 24 to 70 2.8 Canon lens, go to my channel, check out that video there. But yeah, thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.